here we are doing a sit down video how very odd i never do sit down videos anymore especially since i got a camera that doesn't have a flip out screen so then i don't know what i look like and then i'm like mm, am i even filming mm. we're gonna do a sit down video today the last video of the year hopefully hopefully i won't procrastinate editing this too much but i only have one day to do it so <laughs> better do it or else you'll never see this video hello it is i the person who used to do booktube but no longer does but then this year i like i've been reading this whole time that i haven't been doing booktube but like i rediscovered like a bigger uh, like intense love for reading again i wasn't really even watching booktube videos for a while for years i guess mm. I think this year, 2020, has made me realize that I refer to the past in years now. Like, I'm not a child anymore, and like, it's not like, oh, that was only a few months ago, or like a year ago. No, like, it's like, like years. Like, and now that I'm a senior in college as well, like, I refer to everything as like, four years ago, I did this. Four years ago, I started college, and I was still doing booktube. I guess, yeah, four years ago, almost five, I stopped doing booktube. Anyways, so this year, I started like sharing online my reading again i've been reading this whole time pretty casually but the thing with booktube is that there's no room for rereading like you gotta move you gotta keep up with what's in what's popular i definitely feel like booktube has shifted a little bit where it's not like you only have to talk about what's popular like what everybody else is reading people are a lot more diverse with that it's more book talk that has like these are the ones to read read love hypothesis i don't read contemporary i read my love is fantasy and fantasy and fantasy and sometimes sci-fi but i always say that like i read fantasy and sci-fi but then i'm like when's the last time i read a sci-fi book i don't know it's been a really long time yeah not really sci-fi i guess but i would read it if i if like the if if the right book arose you know i'm very particular about my reading um i mostly used to read ya fantasy but this year that is that is that needs to change for next year because this year i was like what am I reading? What is this? It just feels like a lot of the same. But I'm going to talk about the books that I read this year and let's go through them all <laughs> because I haven't really talked about books that much except I'll leave some links to some videos where I did talk about books. There was a whole actual book vlog. Um, almost two-ish, you know, we'll see. But this is my book journal. I started one in... I started this I think in September. So, like I said, I started watching booktube videos again and I've been watching books with Chloe a lot. Like I was just like powering through all her videos because I had kind of watched her back in the booktube days, but then I was like, oh, wow, exactly. This is where it's at. I also really love Elliot books. She has a lot of great fantasy recommendations and videos pertaining to that. I think her videos are very well spoken. Not me, couldn't relate. And yeah, those are the two people that I can think of on the top of my head. But I, uh, yeah, leave your booktube recommendations below. Especially since I'm part of the older generation of booktube people. I'm like, I only know the old people. I don't know any of the new people. Anyways, so let's get into it. Uh, yeah, I did this. I did this book journal because I was very inspired by Books with Chloe and I'm using the same notebook for next year and I just planned it out and I'll give you a little flip through, a little sneak peek, not a sneak peek, it's literally the whole thing. I basically just did like title page, whatever, books read, I wanted like a dark academia theme I guess I was starting to go for. I used one of my prints from December, Patreon prints, I put it in there, set up for my Patreon, and then a Pride and Prejudice type of theme for my reading goals. My reading goal for 2022 is 35 books, and on the next page I did like a series tracker. I was looking at a bunch of different uh, 2022 journal, reading journal um, setups, and I really liked this one that was series tracker because I'm not very good at tracking the series that I'm reading. Uh, and the only one right now that I'm in is Lightbringer series by Brent Weeks. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. And then I just wanted to write an ongoing TBR because at some points, like right now, as of right this very moment, I'm like, huh, what do I read? I don't know. And so I just wanted a list there, just ongoing, because I know that like these will take a while to get to, but I just want to write that, have them written down somewhere so that I can kind of remember that they exist to be read. Oh, and then with my book goal, those little boxes, um, I'm also doing that as a genre tracker as well so that like at the end I can like see really, can see what like genre I read most, like just visually like with a color cord coordinated thing. Last year I did audiobooks versus physical books, but honestly I only read one physical book only finished 
Oh, like finished. Okay, I've read many physical books, but I never finished them. So instead for the audiobooks versus physical books is gonna be in the books read like bookshelf page. Um, and just the physical books will be in gray. Uh, and then the audiobooks are just regular. I mostly read from audiobooks because that's just my life. That's just how my brain works. You know, it's a little bit difficult. Okay. And I don't know what I would do without audiobooks. I use New York Public Library. You can like get audiobooks like as if they're library books you have a certain time to use them sometimes you have to wait for them and i listen to those through overdrive with my library card and i also use audible because audible sponsor me please because at first i was like audible like that's so much money to spend every month but then every month goes and you're just like reading all the time and you're just like hmm, yeah good thing i have this credit good thing i spent this money on this credit so now i can use it and now i can listen to this book um but it does lead to me thinking very hard on which books that i want to get and they had really good sales at one point and they had like five dollar audiobooks and i was like i was all here for that so let's get into it finally let's talk about the books that i read in 2021 i'm gonna try and not be too get too into all of them because it's a bit forever video it'll never end and i'll never edit it if it's too long the first book that i read for the year really started off the year with a positive note i guess uh the handmaid's tale this <laughs> okay. um seems like a very ominous start to the year but it was a really good book it was a lot shorter than i thought i had watched the show up until some point and then i realized that the main actress is a scientologist which is just the irony the irony is just so entertaining i guess but nah i don't i'm not interested in watching the new season the storyline where it's going i'm like Meh. and plus the actress nah, nah. but the series is obviously based off the book and reading the book and having all the like the show visuals in my head it was really nice i really enjoyed it i really really liked how it was written it like expressed the mood the atmosphere so well it was just really good dystopian fantasy uh i gave this a five out of five stars and then i read the mistborn trilogy oh my goodness i feel like it doesn't feel like i read it that long ago and at the same time it feels like a billion years since I read this. I really enjoyed it. Uh, it's definitely a perfect book for introducing into fantasy, into high fantasy, because high fantasy can be a big beast to approach. If you've never read high fantasy before, I definitely recommend this one as an intro into reading high fantasy, because high fantasy is kind of complicated. You think you'll you'll be able to get it, but then it's like, oh, what's going on? When did you ever tell me that this meant this? But then you told me like a billion years ago. With High Fantasy, I think that there's a lot of like exposition, things that it just like takes the story to stand still at points. So that's why a lot of people don't like High Fantasy. So I think this is a good book to get into it. Good series to get into High Fantasy. I really enjoyed it. I had been hearing about this series forever. I searched on booktube, but I felt like every time I ever heard about it, I just, I didn't, it didn't interest me, the way that people would describe it. I was just like, meh, like, I don't care. So because I don't want to be like that, <laughs> I don't want to lead you astray. So you say it's a high fantasy, very interesting world, a little bit of like the bad guy one, and this is the world we're living in, and suppressed people, and like fighting back, and blah blah blah. Very good stuff. Very interesting magic system as well. And very well like thought out explained conveyed to us because it does seem like something pretty complicated so again a good intro high fantasy and so for this series i gave all of the books a five out of five stars and i think that the first book was my favorite book next is a reread of smoke and bone by laney taylor this is a book that like i would always remember because i read it a while ago very long time ago now i feel like and i always had this like memory of it being like a very potent book and i so i was like let me read it 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 gotta be the vibes so i reread it and i also hadn't really remembered why i didn't continue on with the series and so with this reread i was like yeah i'm not gonna continue on i'm not really interested in but it's still a good book it's still i really like the first book i really like the world and the lore it i don't know it's like angels and like like animal mixture people <laughs> There's definitely a better word for that, but I don't know what it is. I mean, follow two different perspectives, and it's a, kind of like a romance, fantasy, YA. Yeah, again, a reread. I didn't rate this. Um, this m year, I haven't really been rating my rereads, because I, I don't know. I don't know why. I can't do it. But I did do it for one of the books, and I was like, wait a minute, I thought I wasn't rating rereads. But, Ella. So moving on to the big, the big chunk here, you know? The thing that changed everything. So back during my booktube days, everybody was just wetting themselves over A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Ass. And I was like, why? Literally, why? 
I found the book at like a like a yard sale tag sale type thing so I got it for like basically free and so I started reading it the physical copy I have that physical copy of that first edition now those are out of stock if you don't know like they don't, they're not printed anymore it's a new edition printed and people were selling them for like hundreds of dollars like 200 300 dollars on eBay and I was like I have that book it's somewhere in storage I have a book. I could have been making bank. So back in that day when I had started it, I think I read like maybe a, a quarter, a third of it. And it was the part where she was going to go find the surreal for the first time. And I was like, no, no, not happening. I was like, this is the worst book I've ever read. It's disgusting. I don't rate books that I've never read. So it, I just went to a DNF pile. Like I was never going to finish it. And then I'd been an anti for it ever since then i was just like i don't know why people are obsessed with this book it's not ya because it was always mark always marketed towards me as a consumer as a viewer of other booktubers as ya and i think that a lot of the times people don't realize that the booktubers we're watching are much older than us even though they are primarily reading ya they're still older people and so they're going to also be reading other things, but they don't disclose that it's not YA. So no wonder I had problems with it. And I know like looking back as an older person now and I've read it, I know that younger me probably wasn't like prepared for this and not that young adults can't read above their level, but I think that they should be forewarned. Um, I think that book genres, they should be well-defined because there can be certain things in books that people can't handle, can be triggers for them. You just, you never know, okay? And I feel like, because of this book, I've realized it a lot more in other books, like this problem of like not disclosing actually what a book is. And it might not even be the fault of the booktubers, like it's just something you don't necessarily think about, doesn't occur, but still is a problem, you know? Anyways, I digress. So this book I hated on for a long time um, because I didn't know that it was for new adults, okay? This is a new adult romance book, fantasy as well, which also can be confusing because I do believe that her Sarah J Mass throne of glass series is ya i don't know though because i just saw something the other day i think the last book might not be ya but i don't know i also have problem we'll talk about that later switching genres in the middle of a series <clears throat> anyways so i hated on this book for a long time and then when book talk book talk is book tiktok when it was sweeping through book tiktok i was like you know what i'm gonna give it a chance because i'm just gonna give books that i used to hate Maybe, maybe they're not so bad, you know? So I listened to the audiobook, so like, there's no way that I'm gonna get through this physically. Mm -mm, not gonna happen. But then I read it, I listened to the audiobook. And I was like... Maybe I'll read the next book. Um, yeah, Eve... I felt like a fool essentially the whole time I was like making fun of it and then I had to like come to terms with am I just hating this book because other people hate it and they make it really funny and then why are those people making fun of this book is it because it's a book for girls not necessarily girls you know what I mean but you know how people hate things that teenage girls like like Twilight is it the patriarchal society we live in you know it's a lot to break down <laughs> the 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 air around Sarah J Mass and her books and whatever obviously there are valid problems and critiques with it like lack of diversity and then that made me think about like but do I want a white author and tell me your thoughts on this because you know I don't really have anybody to talk to th about this so let me know what your thoughts are but like do I want a white author writing people of color as their main characters but in like having control of their stories even though it's a fantasy world and then people of color in fantasy worlds you know it's it's a whole lot to deconstruct that's the word i'm looking for and as a person of color when i'm reading these books i'm like i know what this is and i'm reading it for what it is so that's a lot of like fantasy reads that i have and like yeah anyways and so you know just thinking about like why do i hate this book because it's a romance book why do I hate romance books? Because it's a girly thing. It's a feminine thing to do. I shouldn't be, why am I hating feminine things? Like that doesn't make sense. And then once I like read the first book, I can enjoy the rest of the books for what they are. And this happens in another series that I'll talk about in a second. But I read the first book, second book, third book. First book I gave four stars. Second book I gave five. And then the third book I gave four stars. Second book was great. It's the best one. And then of course afterwards I read A Court of Silver Flames, which is the fourth book. Um, a little bit, it's not 
you could just read the three books and go on with your life. But the fourth book was still enjoyable to listen to. It was like, it's because it's so familiar. I think what I really liked about this series and I think was really successful about it is her ability to make you like the characters. Um, watch me say this and somebody's like, okay, I'm going to read it. And they're like, I hated everybody. She never, I, she did not convince me. You know what? It's my opinion. Duh, the whole thing is my opinion. But I think that's what made this book so successful because a lot of times I push back against that and I'm like, I don't care about these characters. I really don't. Uh, but this series is very good for what it is, of course. Um, and it's just really like a comfort read. There are, of course, people that are in this fandom that are just go way too far. Who cares? Like any fandom um, that just make it, that give it a bad name, you know? It was good. It's definitely comfort read type things. Like I'll lis re listen to them random times if I just need something familiar if I just need something to listen to I can throw on the audiobook good stuff and so then I was like let's read something else from book talk <laughs> I almost want to say I kind of wish I hadn't but like honestly it was, it was a time it was what I needed at the time for sure it was during the summer did I say what I gave a quarter of the silver flames four stars anyways I read this in the summer from blood and ash by Jennifer L. Armentrout this is a new adult book fantasy this book is a hot mess. Like, what is going on? I had so many thoughts at the time. It was paced really weirdly. The first book, the first, like, big chunk, the first half, I think it was more than half, honestly, of that book could have been condensed a lot or it could have been cut off at a certain point, but it cut off really weirdly. I was like, what the hell? I didn't even realize the book was over when it ended in the audiobook. I was like, I did check just to make sure that it was actually the end. I was so confused. And it was not like a good like, oh, can't wait to read the next book then. Like, so enticing. Like, mm -mm. Uh, So it is a romance. Did I say that? New adult romance. Um, it's... <clears throat> and it's not even one of those like new adult romances where they're just like making up a plot so that you can like read smut. Um, it's not even that. Like, it's just weird. It was really weird. It was, it's honestly a really trash book. But then after you're the first book, it's like, oh, okay, I get what this is. I'm just going to have a fun time then afterwards. Like, it's not serious. Uh, I gave the first book a three stars. <laughs> I don't know why three stars. It honestly should have been lower. I was very conflicted because <laughs> I was like, this is objectively a really bad book. But I did have a fun time reading it. So earlier I was talking about characters and um, like how Sarah J. Mass like really gets you to like the characters and like that's kind of like what you're in the book like that's why you're here and with this from Blood and Ash series I was like this woman this author is trying so hard to make us love these characters and I was like I really don't I could care less like who what is your name I know a lot of people love Kieran but I was like I didn't really have a connection. I knew and I'm also an Aquarius so, like it may give you some preface there But I knew that this author was like like him. He is the he's like a, a certain archetype So that she was like here you go love him treat him well Treat him like he's your baby or something and I was like no Like I don't you did not connect me to this character in any kind of way yet. So like Why um again another smutty type of book um, the honeydew thing I really don't get. So my friend like reconnected with an old friend and that old friend was like, you need to read this book. I'm going to buy it for you. So she got it for her. And so she's reading it right now. And we both don't understand this honeydew thing or we understand it. But like, why are people so obsessed with this line? It's not, it's not good. Like, I like what people did on Book Talk with, like, the posters of Honeydew, because I think that's a funny, sneaky little way to, like, get your, a good, the book you love, like, into, like, life and people don't really understand. But, like, they just... And then the fourth book, which is technically a prequel to this book, came out kind of recently, and I started listening to that. Didn't finish it, but I'm just telling you about it. What the fuck is that book? Literally, what the, like, what the hell? It's a prequel but you need to read that prequel in order to understand the fourth book in this from blood and ash series this is in the same world but it like happens in the past but that book is literally just like trash like like not good trash you know what i'm saying it's, like that book is just following along the same exact story as from blood and ash and the characters don't feel any different than from okay moving on with our lives then i read in august kingdom of the wicked by carrie maniscalco i think she wrote 
stalking Jack the Ripper, um, which I really liked, and then the second book I liked as well. And then, like, the third book, it was going to have something in it, and I was like, no, why, why, lady? Why'd you have to do that? It's a YA. Stalking Jack the Ripper is a YA, and King of the Wicked is a YA, question mark? So, King of the Wicked is fantasy, but it has, like, mythology in it, so it has to do with, like, the seven rings of hell. So this girl, her twin mysteri mysteriously gets murdered, and so then she's like, why? So the seven rings of hell, there's like different princes for each one. And so like she gets wrapped up with Wrath, that that prince. Um, in the beginning, I liked the aspects of like the culture is like Italy and like the food and the way that she was describing it all. It was very, not, very good, very good. Like it's very much her style, her type of writing as far as I can remember from Stalking Jack the Ripper. And I really enjoyed that those parts of it. But then the romance felt weird, it felt forced, there's a chemistry, I don't know, can't find it. Second book, I read the second book, I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit, I read that four books later. The second book, when I started reading that one, I was like, that first book could have been condensed down into a few chapters and then put into this book and then called the second book the first book with that a little addition. Like, literally... I was only reading the second book because I really liked the idea. I really like, I want a book that's about like the seven princes of hell and the seven rings or whatever, you know? It's a very good idea. I wanted to read it. But it's, I was, it was rumored. I was heard and I saw places that said that it, the second book is a new adult. But the first book, and I have a vlog of this and my feelings. I, I get like way more into it than I meant to, but... It did, it's, it, it was living in my brain. I was hyper fixating on it, I guess. The first book is YA, and then the second book is a new adult. That doesn't make sense. That, um, I don't... But then when I read the second book, I was like... Like, it's trying to be a new adult, but, like, you're too afraid or something? I don't know. And the end, like, really annoyed me because of that. Okay. You know what? <laughs> Annoying, I gave the second book a two stars because I just really like that like world. I really like the idea of it, but like why does the book have to be so bad? Will not be will I read the third book? I also don't want to like hate read books because this is the book that made me realize like, okay, maybe YA and the way that people write YA isn't working for me. So I'm not gonna read YA. Like I'm not just gonna stay here and hate on books that aren't meant for me you know that's why i have a problem with people that like, like stop reading books that aren't meant for you like that's why you hate them all so moving on read the black prism by brent weeks that's when i started this book journal so i got a little bit of a writing i did a little writing on it um oh thank goodness i did a little writing on for the wolf as well because i was just about to say i don't remember what the hell i, I didn't like about that the black prism by brent weeks it's a series, high fantasy. This is one of those high fantasy that's like, hold on to your brain, guys. It's about to fall out of your butthole. But it was really good. I really enjoyed it. She's a thick, she's a thick boy. But um, it was okay. I, I survived, okay? Um, I wrote Good Soup. It was the time of Good Soup. High fantasy craziness, very good characters, character voices, um, like the inner model. Like it felt like every character was written very differently and so I could distinguish from the characters, which is very important, um, especially in high fantasy because you really need to like remember the different to differentiate. I thought the world was very interesting. Uh, I really like how it was presented to us like over over the course of the book. I oh, I really liked how he, the author would give us like a sliver of information and then we would like come up with our own conclusions conclusions in our head and then he'd be like psych bitch <laughs> no but also I'm not very good at like predicting books so I thought that was nice because it, it happened I think multiple times so that's why I was like oh I like this vibe it like reverses it back on us and I think it's a good payoff plot points and and plot decisions is that the word <laughs> um that were made made sense to characters like a character didn't decide to do something just because it'll move the plot along. I think it went well with their personalities, their decisions. Good stuff. At the end, something happens. And I had me cackling. I was like, I haven't like laughed so hard at a book in so long. Gorgeous. Loved it. Gorgeous, gorgeous girls. Love. 
misery. <laughs> uh, I do plan on reading the next book, but it's a big one. Now I'm like intimidated by the size of it. So I think probably like during February or March, you know, those long kind of months, but they also kind of feel like short months. I don't know. That's when I'll read it. Um, but I don't want to like leave it too long that I kind of forget what's going on in the first book. So anyways, five out of five stars. Um, there are also definitely critiques of Black Prism, like sexism, but again, this is one of those things where it's like, I know what I'm reading, like I know who wrote this book and I know when it, they were they wrote it. So like, don't expect, like if I don't want this in my literature, then I won't read it. Not that it's okay that this exists, but do you understand what I mean? So next we have For the Wolf by Hannah Witten. I don't know if it was just me that hyped it up in my own head or if it was like actually a pretty hype book. I think that it was actually like a pretty hype book that a lot of people were talking about. And again, this was like when I was getting into all the books and reading again and like the book community. Cause I'd always been reading, but I just didn't have like that vigor for reading. It was just like something I was doing casually. Um, but anyways, I had really high hopes for this. It was a Red Riding Hood or Beauty and the Beast. I think it was Beauty and the Beast retelling, but she's got like a red cloak on so it looks like Red Riding Hood. It sucked. I gave it a two stars. Let's see what I said because I don't remember anymore. Uh, I had so much hope for this. It sounded very good, but it wasn't. <laughs> Big dumb bitch energy for sure from the main character. No chemistry with the romance. Mm -mm. Plot was boring. Side characters. This is another one that was like all these side characters. Like, I don't care. I don't care about it. I don't know your names. Like, nothing is interesting about you. I feel like I'm being told to like you again. Like, why is this happening? Two books in one year when that's happening? I don't think so. Especially since I don't read that many books. <laughs> it could have been great, but it just really wasn't. It. I think that I had the impression that it had a lot of potential, but it missed. Like, just everything in it didn't feel quite right. And by the end of the like book, towards the end, I was like, I really don't want to like finish it. I was like dragging myself through it because I was like, like I just, I just need to finish it. I got so far. I got the odd book. I don't want to waste my credit. <sighs> It was not good and a lot of times I push through books I don't TNF them because I'm like what if the last bit is the best part um, and I also don't rate books again uh, because like that I don't finish because what if the ending was really good and then I did a reread of Stolen Songbird so still in the back in the book tube days Stolen Songbird by Danielle L. Jensen um, literally my favorite book of all time I just did so many things for it uh, a pre the prequel this is it right here <laughs> the prequel came out during my booktube days and I did a lot for the prequel because I was like here for it I got to read it early it was just a great time I loved the, those books so much and I was like now my tastes have changed I wonder if like I still like Stolen Songbird or if it's just like it's good in my head good in my memory um to the reader who I was then which is still totally valid but like would I still like it as who I am now and I did I really liked it it was good again it's a YA fantasy so fantasy it's basically about fey like fairies fey but like they're not called fey and so i don't think that people realize that it's a fey book and people are always looking for fey stories um but i really liked it it's basically about the fey are like trapped under a mountain due to a curse and so they're looking to break the curse and so they kidnap this girl um and in order to like help them break the curse it doesn't really work so they're trying to figure yeah blah 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 she's human you know good stuff enemies lovers i hate you so much but i can't show my real self good stuff okay i loved it again but i was not gonna read the second and third book i was not gonna put myself through that pain again also don't read the prequel before the series the prequel is not for you if you're new to this it's not for you it's for afterwards a lot of spoilers you know it's for afterwards when you have no soul left in your body and you just need it to be broken even more so you know good stuff i loved it again five out of five stars again again it was a reread but i rated it again anyways i don't know and then i moved on to rereading the raven cycle which this i think is my third reread of the raven cycle i've read it like every two years um at this point so i guess 2023 here i come again but again i listened to them all audiobook all five out of five stars this is one that i was like these are all rereads i don't know why i rated <laughs> rereads i really enjoyed them again i think that they are kind of timeless they're a fantasy it's a raven cycle it begins with the raven boys by maggie seapotter here they are this is my favorite shelf i don't really know why six of crows and crooked kingdom are on here because i don't even know if they would still be my favorites today I, I need to work on this shelf, but 
you know, the Raymond Cycle, Scorpio Races, uh, Magnesy Fodder. I really enjoy them again. They are, they do take place in the real world. They're urban fantasy, YA, which I don't like. I do not read things in the real world. No, thank you. Not at all. But this was good. I would love this series very much and I recommend listening to it. I don't really know how to summarize it, so just read it. <laughs> but I feel like at this point, a lot of people have read this and know about it. And so we're coming to an end here. Because then I finished up the year rereading the listening to the audiobooks narrated by Jim Dale of Harry Potter. Uh, these audiobooks I've had downloaded on a hard drive um, for years, probably since I like after I first ever read them so don't worry about streaming profits but I started with the Order of the Phoenix and I was only gonna like listen to it casually because it was like a snowy day and I was like this is a vibes and I don't really listen to the uh, Goblet of Fire very often because I do li like re-listen to them almost every year and a lot of times I like to just throw one on randomly just to, like a little comfort thing <laughs> but then I and then I get to you know the Order of the Phoenix and the ha Haplo Prince and then Deathly Hollows and then I finished it and I was like didn't mean to do that but okay I guess so I mean I read them within like a week or two but the last book that i've read for the year is a ruin of roses i don't know how i stumbled upon this book i don't know it's a beauty and the beast retelling new adult romance fantasy definitely new adult okay i did really enjoy this book it's very quick very short very sweet wraps up nicely maybe i found it on audible like it was just recommended towards the end i was like wait a minute I haven't been annoyed at this book like I haven't been annoyed at like a decision made which is very rare for me I'm like oh I'm just annoyed all the time by these stupid characters but this one I was like oh not bad it's very much a new adult okay so proceed with caution I like don't have any words left <laughs> I literally just finished this so what did I think of it very good very easy read and I really like the narrator of the audiobook I think she did a really good job yeah, I was thinking with this um, narrator that if she hadn't read one of the characters in the way that she did, if I had read it physically with my own brain voice, I probably would not have liked the character. And the thing with listening to audiobooks all year long is that sometimes it's like, am I not liking this book because of the way that the author, the narrator is reading it? You know, like, it's weird. Like, Stone Songbird, don't listen to this on audiobook. I hate the narrator. She made Cecile sound like stitch a freaking dumb bitch. I, I was annoyed by N N Cecile in the audiobook because I tried to listen to an audiobook a while ago but I was like this is not how I read Cecile physically like in the voice of my hand. Oh just be cautious. Um, consider that when you're reading a book I think. Sorry. Like <laughs> A Court of Thorns and Roses. The three books, the first three books are narrated by one narrator. Good narrator. Whatever. Standard. The fourth book <laughs> read by a different narrator it's literally terrifying. Literally terrifying. Why is she reading it like that? Why is she doing that? I don't know. Very weird. So yeah, those are the books that I read for 2021. But I'm still trying to finish Vespertine by tomorrow night. So wish me luck. <laughs> I really don't know. Like Vespertine by Margaret Rogerson. I've been reading this book for three months. Not because it's a bad book. I'm really enjoying this book. Very much so. It'll probably be five stars. I'm almost done with it, but I'm just a very, very slow physical book reader. Like, what? Like, why is it so hard? But it's really good, and I'm really enjoying it. Um, it's a YA fantasy. I really like the magic system and the world that Margaret Rogerson has created in that book. She has two other books. They're all standalones. I think that this book is a standalone, this Vespertine. I just really love the worlds that she comes up with and how she, like, conveys a whole story within one book. Just so good read uh, an enchantment of ravens if you haven't already i was thinking of doing a reread of that right before the end of the year um but i don't know i have to edit this video and finish freaking vespertine i had a goal of 20 books this year and when i surpassed that i was like i'll raise it to 30 like why not uh not that i thought that i would get to 30 but i just uh, why not so with this a rune of roses it makes 26 if i finish vespertine then that'll be 27 for the year I don't know, look at my Goodreads. I finally made it public because I didn't realize that it wasn't on that. But in the end, my favorite books of the year were Mistborn, The Court of Mist and Fury, The Black Prism, Soul and Song, Weird, of course, The Raven Boys, of course, Blue Lily, Lily, Lily Blue is my favorite book in the Raven Cycle series, um, and Order of the Phoenix is my favorite book in Harry Potter. So I think that's it. I think I 
what it looks like majority of what I read in my genre tracker is romance fantasy but also a chunk of YA honestly but I think romance fantasy takes takes the cake here. Here's to another year of good reading. I want to start the year off with uh, on a good positive note so hopefully I'll be doing a reading vlog. So yes, tell me your thoughts. If there are other things about certain books that I should consider or if you just want to share what books you read, what your favorites were and honestly thank you for making it to the end of this video. Um, I will have all of the links to the videos and people I talked about below and I'll have a list of all the books as well. Maybe. Maybe not. Will I? Will I do it? You watched the video, you know. Goodbye. I was yours on Sunday While we watched the children play We fell deep and love again Like we always do